Good morning, everyone. I'm Alex, and today we're going to be looking at the platform starter kit. We're going to be upgrading it a little bit. There's a few things I don't like. More specifically, we're going to eliminate the middleware. Um, if you haven't already, and if you're not familiar with the platform starter kit, be sure to check uh, Lee Rob's video on it. It's an excellent video, walks through everything from the days he was still at Vercel. How are we gonna do this? Well, let's jump in. We're gonna scroll down a little bit here and let's just clone it. All right, DS code here, I'm just gonna clone it. And then we're gonna open this. And there you go. So we're right in here. Quickly, we're just gonna install. There you go. And so just so we're able to run this without any environment variables, I'm just gonna remove the data. And then here, we're just gonna put the subdomain again. Wonderful. Let's run it. And let's go to our local host. So what we got here is pretty simple. Typically allows you to choose a subdomain, choose an emoji. Since we're just skipping a little bit over things here, I'm gonna go and go straight to my subdomain. So slash scrolled. And then there you go. So you have multi-tenancy, you have subdomains, and then you're able to render uh, different pages based off of that. So how does it work? Well, the way it works right now is there is this middleware file and it handles a lot of the logic for the redirection and extracting the subdomains. So you'll notice here it grabs the host, it grabs it from the headers. Um, there's some special treatment for local host, but then ultimately what you're trying to deduct is whether there is a subdomain that's part of that host. And then this extracts it. And then the middleware piece is basically saying, if there is a subdomain, then rewrite to slash s slash that subdomain. So you'll notice in the file structure, there's this slash s slash subdomain, and this is the rewrite that's enabling all of that. With the current implementation, however, there are a few small issues that we can improve on. So the first thing is if I do go back to the root site, and I do slash s slash slash code, this actually brings me to the same place. So the slash s path actually exists on the root as well. Um, and I don't need to go through it with the subdomain. Maybe you're okay with that. Maybe you don't want it. So we'll see how we can fix this. And then the main thing is that this uses middleware. So there's actual JavaScript code that needs to run. But ultimately, all that we're doing is either redirect in the case of admin or a rewrite. So how can we take this rewrite and move it to the next config instead? Well, let's do just that and we'll start very simple. Let's delete our middleware. All right, so now in the next config, I can just remove all of this and we're gonna do some rewrites. I'm gonna go like this. And we're going to do before files. And I don't want you to write everything for me. And we'll just go like this. OK. So what's the logic we're looking for? We're looking for matching any path, basically, that has a subdomain and directing to slash s slash that subdomain. So we can, we can take this here. And source is not going to be like that. But this is our goal, right? We want to have the subdomain be part of where we're going. And if there are any subpaths on the subdomain, we also want to treat that. These uh, aliases we need to extract from other properties. So how are we going to be doing that? Well, typically what you would have for the source is just your path, right? So you would have slash, path, star. And this is basically saying any path, bring me to subdomain path. But we don't know what subdomain is yet. And this is where we can use the has property on the rewrites. So the type is host. And what do we want from the host? Just like we saw in the middleware, what we want from the host is we're going to take the subdomain and we're going to go localhost for now. And that should do the trick. So I'll just put a comma here. Make sure you don't write any typos. 
So if I go here, what I can do is I can go back to the subdomain and let's see what we get. All right, well, it's kind of working, but we can see styles are not applied. There's a few things that are wrong. And that's the first thing that's a little bit more complex when we go the middleware less route. So what do we have to do to bring back the styles? Well, we kind of need to exclude some of the built-in paths that are in Next.js that are used for build assets, tailwind styles, and all these other things. So when we match on the path, we can use a simple regex here to exclude any of the underscore next, underscore static, for cell, well-known. All of these paths that we don't want to mess with, we're just going to say ignore them. So this exclamation mark just means don't include any of those paths in the rewrite that we're doing here. So let's go, let's go back and refresh the page. And boom, we already have a very similar result to what we had at the beginning, except you see, we're now using solely rewrites in the next config. Before we go any further and we start fixing the other things, just wanted to mention that before files is important here. This basically means that we want to apply those rewrites before we evaluate any of the layouts, any of the pages in the application. So this is, this is important to kind of make sure that we direct you to the right pages as opposed to rewriting after you've started evaluating the pages. So the first thing we'll fix here is you'll notice we use localhost, so this only works locally. What we want is to have the domain of where the app is hosted um, put here. So how can we do that? Well, one thing I like doing, I'll just paste a little bit of code here, is if you're in a Vercel environment, you can actually use some of the built-in Vercel environment variables like the Vercel URL, the branch URL, or even your production URL. And you'll notice these are all separated by pipes, so they're in a regex, trying to match all the individual ones. And in the case where you're not in a Vercel environment, likely you're on localhost, you just put localhost like we had. I've also found that sometimes the environment variables may not contain everything, so you might want to create your own environment variables for some additional custom domains, especially if you're doing custom domains on preview branches or other branches, you'll want to add them here. So I might have sashcode.dev, things like that, um, if I'm doing this on preview branches. So I'll just grab this root domain here. We'll change this to a template literal and then boom, there you go. We now also work not just on localhost. Great. There was one other thing we said we wanted to fix, which is this ability to access the subdomains on the root. So one thing I like to do for that is we'll just copy our whole rewrite here. So we still want to match every path. Um, in this case, what if I match specifically the root domain? So I'm saying I don't have any subdomain. We won't have this little variable here. And this is kind of the, the default behavior, right? You have a path, you're on the root of it, navigate me there. What I like doing is I like doing something like this. So I add root and we can do that in the folder structure as well. And we can move admin underneath here. We'll take the page, we'll move that to root. And really what's nice with this is we're matching specifically no subdomain and we're going into this root, uh, this root path. Since it's at the same level as the slash s slash subdomain, there won't be any conflicts. You can't go root slash s. And so that fixes our issue of being able to navigate to the subdomains off of the root. So let's go and see that in action. If I refresh the page, things here still work. But now if I go to the root and I try to navigate to slash s slash slash code, well, subdomain not found. It's not the typo. It's actually that there is no um, way to navigate there. And this is the default for full page in the project. The other benefit of this setup is Technically, we don't really need that slash s anymore. So you could move everything up one level, eliminate the slash s, and then you have subdomains or you have the root at the same level um, and you can work with that just the same.
And really, it's that easy to replace all the middleware with two simple rewrites in your next config. I highly recommend, like I said earlier, to check out Lee Rob's video on the whole setup and everything you need to do um, to get this platform kit going. One thing I'll mention is if you are setting up custom domains on Vercel, make sure you set up the wildcard subdomain so that you have all of that working properly with everything that we've looked at. But otherwise, things are pretty much plug and play from there. One thing I did develop as well that I really use in some other projects is this subdomain link. Simple wrapper around the next link that allows you to specify a subdomain in, uh, and your path name. Super useful for navigating from one subdomain to another or from the root to a subdomain. So if this is useful for your use case, be sure to check the description. I'll have all the code down below. The other thing I really like doing is I like developing with SSL when I'm running locally. And you may run a few into a few issues with the setup here um, if you're trying to use the default Next.js experimental flags. So stay tuned, subscribe, and then next week we're going to be looking at how can we enable SSL with the subdomain setup from the platform starter kit so that we can develop securely and have a super awesome project. Thank you, and I'll see you again soon.